Okie dokie, uh, let's just get into it. You probably saw today, well it started last night, um, the information about the 29 Nobel Prize winners and some also some Fields Nobel winners writing a letter to Theresa May and Jean-Claude Juncker about the importance of preserving EU and UK science and then this was paired with a survey done at the Crick Institute in London on their 1,000 employees looking at what they thought about Brexit and science. So so let's go through all of that because it's been right throughout the press. I've seen it in the FT, I've seen it on the BBC, I've even seen it in CNN. It's been all over the place and this was headed up largely by Sir Paul Nurse who um, is a master of uh, 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 promotion and um, getting public awareness of science. And incidentally, Paul's on our advisory board and I haven't even told you guys that yet. But um, I should announce that at some point. But um, let's drive straight into it. First of all, uh, the letter. So if you don't know the content of the letter, because all of these uh, reports that talk about it don't then actually give a link through to it. So I'm going to summarise it for you here so that you know. Um, it pretty much goes like this. Dear Prime Minister May, scientific research and innovation are absolutely vital for treating disease, generating clean energy, building the digital industries of the future, protecting the environment, securing food supply. However, for science to flourish and deliver this, it needs the mobility of ideas and people. Europe was the home of the Enlightenment and the birthplace of modern science, but partly as a result of two devastating internecine wars in Europe in the 20th century, it suffered a decline relative to the USA. However, this decline has been reversed recently and it is now flourishing and the EU, through its many initiatives and programmes, has greatly benefited European science. Um, many of us in the science community therefore think that Brexit is a, a risk because it puts up barriers. So that's a very interesting um, historical angle on it because um, Europe is the birthplace of science and America did get ahead during the 20th century. But as they rightly point out, I mean, European science is now actually bossing it. It is kicking US science, it's gotten back ahead. And a lot of people don't know this, but if you look at the data, there are three big players in global science at the moment. There's the EU, there's the US, and there's China. And the EU is ahead of those other entities. I mean, the EU has got more uh, researchers than both. And the gap with the US is growing. The EU has got more scientific output than the both. And the gap with the US is increasing. And also in terms of high value papers, like in the top decile, the top 10% of publications, the EU has recently overtaken the US for those. So the EU and Europe as a whole is on the up because the EU is the glue that binds together the European research area and facilitates a lot of it. So European science is really flying at the moment and not a lot of people are aware of that. So it's good to put it back in uh, a context. Um, and then it encourages the Prime Minister and it says a similar thing to Jean-Claude Juncker. Um, there is a commitment for UK and EU science to stay together. Um, it's really, really important. This has been highlighted by Pascal Lamy too. So let's come together and, and have a good deal that preserves UK and EU science. So I just thought I'd give you the, the overview of what that letter was. And basically the idea, and as pointed out by Paul Nurse was that this is an area where it's clearly a win-win. So if you focus on science and if you focus on securing at least a deal for science and that sets the right tone. Um, and um, so now let's get on to the survey because uh, Sir Paul Nurse heads up the Crick Institute where they also did a survey. They have a thousand staff there, some 75% of which responded and you should hear the results, it's fairly devastating. Incidentally, you should know that the Crick has about just over 40% staff from elsewhere in the EU, 40-something uh, from the UK, and I think 12% from the rest of the world. So it's very 
um, uh, EU heavy and that's partly associated with its location, King's Cross St Pancras. It's meant to be connected with the Eurostar in order to be able to have that European collaboration. It was set up before Brexit came walking along. So anyway, the results of the survey are very devastating. Um, particularly with no deal Brexit, 97% think that it would be bad for UK science. 76% very negative, 21% negative. 82% think it would be bad for EU science, but that's 24% very negative and 58% negative. And it's similar kind of numbers that it would be bad for international science. 83% think that it would harm their own work to some degree. So that's no deal Brexit, which hurts the UK um, a lot, but then also the EU and the rest of the world to a degree in terms of science. Um, what do scientists think of the UK government and how they're handling this? It's pretty damn negative. 12% think the government understands the needs of science. 2% um, think that the government is clearly committed, uh, well, sorry, has clearly communicated the impact of Brexit on science. 4% think the government is committed to getting a good deal for science. 3% think the scientific community is being listened to and represented in Brexit discussions. And that last one hurts me because obviously... I'm trying to keep the, the Scientists for EU flag flying there and this channel has got more engagements week after week than any other pro-EU channel but I could do with more staff to do more research, I could do with more time to get involved with all the politics and push that, I could do with more help from the science community bluntly um, and so it's frustrating that I don't have enough time and effort to, to put into that and that NHS Against Brexit is also sucking up a huge chunk of time. If you want to help out, please like, go to the page and, and donate so that I can take on more staff to do that. Anyway, um, scientists are not confident at the Crick and not confident in the future as well. 10% are confident in the future of UK science, 24% not at all confident, 48% not very confident, 17% neutral. So 8% are confident in their EU colleagues' future in the UK. 4% are confident in the future of science funding. And 10% are confident in the security of essential supplies. And actually, if you want to know about damage done already, there was another question in here that shows that 45% of lab heads say that Brexit has already affected their work. 6% very negative, 39% negative. So there's already been a slowdown, a lot of them saying that uh, recruitment of new scientists is harder, exclusion from EU programmes and increasing supply costs due to the fall in pound. OK, so that is a report that half of them are, um, f have seen, you know, Brexit already cause um, damage just since the vote. And then in terms of uh, the UK and EU staff, the UK staff um, are equally less likely and, and, and more likely to leave um, because of their, their movement options, but the EU staff there are very, very likely to leave. What was the figure? 78% um, of EU scientists are less likely to stay in the UK after Brexit, with only 5% more likely or much more likely. So that's, that's what we're really uh, looking at here. And... Um, it's a great little snapshot of the mood in the science community because it resonates with um, what I've heard in so many other places at, at different universities or in different um, science and innovation related companies. Essentially, there has been um, a powering down of the UK brand in science through the Brexit vote, through lots of issues not being addressed, like through the fallen pound, through our role on the science programme not being secured, and of course, overall, through... Uh, the hostile environment and lack of adequate protection of EU citizens in this country. That is a real, real killer on, on the science community. And even though we're trying to preserve the community itself from all the different political shenanigans of the country, it is very, very hard to ask people to come to a country where they object to the politics of the country, come to the country where they don't know what the funding future is going to be, come to the country where they think there's increased xenophobia 
and when they're outside the lab in the local villages, they don't know what abuse they're going to get. You know, what about if they've got small children that they want to bring up here? It's very hard to attract people, um, not into your lab and work environment, but actually into a country where they think there might be um, an environment, a wider environment that they don't want to partake of and supporting a government whose values they do not support. They don't want to be paying their taxes. Uh, into that and supporting that. So this is a real battle that, that, that we have to uh, face down now. I think it's useful that this intervention has come in at this time to remind people across the broader media about the importance of science for the future economy, the whole sentiment of science and how it works on international collaboration. Um, Paul was a great spokesperson today. I mean, obviously, political events are overtaking us fast and we're campaigning hard now for a people's vote to ditch the whole shebang entirely because it is a failed experiment um, and either checkers the the shotgun barrel of checkers or the shotgun barrel of no deal are both equally unpalatable to the population so we shouldn't pull the trigger we should put the gun down have a cup of tea and sort out fundamental problems because brexit isn't going to help that but it is a useful reminder at this stage to have Paul Nurse, and this was backed up by the Royal Society as well, to come in and remind people of the cutting edge of our economy and the cutting edge of our future jobs. This is what the sentiment in, in that community feels like. So that's the summary for you. That's the letter. That's the summary of, of the polling. I hope you found that useful. Um, please feel free to pop up any questions underneath and I will address that.